New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. It is Steve, and joining me today, two amazing professionals in the field of Christian counseling, Dr. Jill Hubbard. Hi, Jill. Hey, Steve. How are you? Good to see you and be with you, and in the studio with me, Becky Brown. Hey, Becky, how are you? Hey, I'm your co-facilitator. You are. Hi, Becky. Hi. Hi, Jill. It's good to see you. I was hoping it was here, but I'm glad you're there. (laughs) Well, you know. (laughs) The reason Becky said co-facilitator is because I was her co-facilitator in in our uh, marriage intensive intimacy intensive Mm -hmm. and so we had a you know film crew doing the documentary and so we decided becky would do a group she doesn't normally and that i would co-facilitate so i was teaching with mylon and Kay, and then i would do the group it it literally was i would say for me (laughs) kind of life changing or at least it's certainly changed well you know it was pretty amazing because it was his first time doing that which shocked (laughs) a lot of people Mm -hmm. i've done it a few times a few hundred times and i love it it's my favorite thing in the world but um you know we always ask the participants what um what their thoughts are when they leave and i have to say steve got high marks one of the one of the attendees (laughs) they said steve arterburn had flawless execution during the entire <laughs> workshop. There you go. Okay. But look, here's here's the other thing. You know, Jill, because I don't do this all the time. I know. These, I'm they're, they're, <laughs> well, they're telling this stuff, you know, and I'm I'm like my head's starting to sag, and and I'm I'm you know almost going to tear up. And I look over at Becky, and and she looks so hopeful and yeah. <laughs> and optimistic you know and it was just you it's know, intense like, okay, the groups are intense that's a yes, train that's what a trained professional that's right yeah. does but let me read you something uh that one of the people wrote because it really does say what that is mm-hmm. all about she said this was the most horribly incredible mm-hmm. weekend we've ever had being able to go to the terribly uncomfortable places together and come out the other side Truly knowing where the other is coming from was such a rewarding experience. It was a painful and scary process, but I'm so glad we took the risk and we dived right in because our marriage will never be the same. While there will be problems in the future, I am sure we now have the tools to conquer them together instead of letting them create those walls between us. Thank God. God. Now Aww. look, you you folks that support us, that's what you're supporting right. is that that's what we do on these weekends. Now, I don't care if you're about to divorce or you just want a better marriage. The next time we do this is is in February on Valentine's Day. Please come and let us work with you because um, it it is truly truly life changing i know and i I just say it all the time but it's it's hard to describe and Mm -hmm. i love that steve was able to be in a group yeah yeah. and then also present i mean it was just oh okay that's double wow it was right you worked really hard steve i did but it (laughs) was it was just a a life once in a lifetime experience now (laughs) do you notice that once in a lifetime yeah yeah. i'm gonna do it again (laughs) yeah Well, it's like that, that says a lot about we me. therapists work hard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hard work. <laughs> it is. Well, there's an old Doris Day lyric that my wife loves about uh, we have a moment um, that we'll have forever, but never again. <laughs> In other words, we'll, we'll never forget it, but you nope. know, there won't we be won't. anything I like, like it. it. I like that. But that's the, the same thing that happens with the groups. That's true. It's an opportunity to change everything. And if you want to know about the our our intensive, it's one eight hundred New Life. And the next one coming up is Restore, and you could go from being a broken, bitter, angry woman to restored. Mm-hmm. You call one eight hundred New Life, and we'll tell you all about it. We'll take a break. Come back one eight hundred two two nine three thousand one eight hundred two two nine three thousand for two hours. We'll be back. 
feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met, connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight, hoping for healthy marriages, and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Washington, D.C., November 15th to the 17th. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here, Dr. Jill Hubbard, Becky Brown, 1-800-229-3000. And I wanted to say one more thing about Restore. We're going to be in Washington, D.C. in a couple weeks. And um, what we find so many times, and I think we had a caller on yesterday's show that had this experience. So many women bear the shame of their husband's mm-hmm. choices, oh, yeah. behavior, yes. right. and they don't see how they're carrying their shame. So, you know, it, you guys, I just can't say it enough. Uh, come and be with us in Washington, D.C. and find out how much support and um, just great teaching to kind of change the way that your thinking is so that if you know you stay with your husband it's going to be great if not we're going to help you as you move forward 1-800 new life to find out about restore 1-800-229-3000 to join us on the program jr baltimore maryland listens on wava how you doing buddy hey i'm i'm okay i'm glad i'm talking to you today it's been a while uh, I've been wanting to talk to somebody about my situation for a while, but I've just been praying about it. Uh, the day okay, I so what, what is that situation? What is the situation? Uh, my, uh, my wife and I aren't having sex anymore. It's been like going on for this like for about two years now. We're like, I work at night. She works during the day. And uh, when I'm at home up in the bedroom, she stays far away from the bedroom as possible. And then when it's bedtime, she waits until I go to sleep, for delay, get in the bed, sleeps on one side, and then if I rule over to touch or feel something, she'll say, no, not now, I'm tired. And then she gets up in the morning before I even get out of bed, and she's gone. And so I, when she, did all this start? I'm home, she had, this started, like, this has been going on for, like, two years now. Uh, I've two been, years. I've kind of been putting mm-hmm. up with it because we still... We still been we still go to church on Sunday, so I've been kind of just putting up with it. But now, um, it's getting harder for me to take. And uh, if I start, if so, I bring it so, up, it starts an argument. Yes. So what happened Hello? two years ago, Jr.? Like when? Uh, what well, happened prior um, to everything coming to a halt? Well, uh, I had some years ago. I had PTSD, and I lost my job as a uh, firefighter. Okay. And uh, she she was found another guy while I was in on all kinds of medications and went out and stayed gone with him like for three three or four days and uh, that started it. And so so she was cheating. That, but that's been, while you were going through yeah, a really difficult yeah. time. Yes. All right. So what's the and, question uh, for us then? What's the, what's the question you're interested in? Uh, how 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 what do I need to do to move on myself? Because I see women can move on, or what can a guy do? What have you done to change things? Well, uh, I've I've tried to go to counseling with her. Uh, she, we went to on a Tony Evans cruise, uh, uh, a couple of counseling sessions with the VA hospital and. It just seems like it always comes back to I'm. I don't care what you do. See you later. And so I'm, I, I don't want to. I'm just telling. Um, mm-hmm. So Jr. Um, what you're saying is that you feel like you've tried some things and you're at a stalemate. And it sounds to me like your wife is 
pretty shut down. Is mm-hmm. she still in relationship with the other guy? No, she's not. But um, I, I noticed she buys a lot of sexy clothes and stuff. You know. Well, and, uh, but she wears them to work. how do you know that? How um, do you know she's not still involved with the other guy? I, 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 I hope not. I mean, I. Okay. I don't know. So when I'm you're so not. the hard part in in marriage, it, the hard part is when you've had this huge break of trust, this whole betrayal thing, but there's not been a plan or a process to kind of move into the truth. Um, what happens is it just creates a wall that lasts longer than you ever thought it would. And so mm-hmm. here now you're thinking. I don't know that she's doing something. I hope she's not doing something. But in the same sentence, you're saying that she's buying this sexy uh, right. lingerie. Not a good sign, my friend. And all of this goes totally against what we're looking for when this happens of humility, remorse, wanting to restore. So I would say this. She's, she's at least in an affair with herself. She has given you grounds for divorce. And it's almost like, it it seems like she's kind of wanting you to divorce her or she would go ahead and divorce you. But you are a non-entity now in all of this. She doesn't care about your feelings. She doesn't care that she's hurt you. She's not doing anything. Now, I want to know why you haven't required anything of her. If you were a woman, I'd be asking... Uh, you the same thing about the man? Why haven't you required anything of her? Why haven't you divorced her? Or filed for divorce so that you would know, does she think I'm serious and does she want to keep this marriage together? We want to keep the marriage together, but you don't have a marriage. She betrayed you and she's not moving back toward you. Why didn't you file for divorce already? Just curious. I gave her a chance. I told her, come on back home. Let's talk about it. And did you talk? And, um, yeah, we talked. And um, uh, I guess uh, that's, that's, all, that's all we did was talk. Um, and what did you hear her say? Yeah. And, JR, what did you hear her say? Uh, she, she never said I was sorry or anything like that. Or And then she didn't want to. Uh, she didn't want to change her phone. She didn't want to change her phone number. She didn't want to, the guy she had the affair with on, was on a job. She didn't want to quit a job and nothing like that. So, she, you know, she. So she was willing to I come mean, back home, but she really wasn't willing to change anything. Like she didn't come back right, to the marriage. She just came back to the comforts of home. Yes. Okay. okay. So Jay, and here's the. Let me ask it this way. So why, in the midst of this, did you never say to her that this isn't good enough you, you have to I, I, do something I did. different or i'm going to leave or you're going to have to move we're going to divorce right. well uh, what happened here last year uh she went out and went to and jumped on the trampoline and at some trampoline park and, and um uh, broke her well tore her meniscus and now she has to have surgery. Her surgery is next month, so I'm just giving it until her she heals from her surgery, and then uh, I'm planning on giving me some time to get myself together to to, uh, to, to, to file for divorce or something. Okay, so really what I would encourage separated. you to do, regardless of all of that kind of stuff, Jay, I would encourage you to get with a counselor. Mm-hmm. Whether she goes or not, you really need some good support. Um, You're still holding your breath because you can't believe that she would do this to you. And she doesn't really have, she's not, she's not coming back to you. That's, you know, kind of why Steve's asking about um, what's keeping you there. And I hear that you're scared. I hear, you know, Mm -hmm. that you're kind of scared. And I think it would be really helpful for you to have a good counselor um, to help you in this process, whatever the future may bring Mm -hmm. yeah because to be the deer caught in the headlights jr that isn't going to bring her back to you Mm -hmm. right you have to show that you're proactively getting some support some input so that then you can start to have some boundaries with her and you can start to have a, a a strength in you that she can say, oh, she can get a sense that you're serious and that she's got to choose. She either works on yeah. this marriage or she's out and that yeah. you want to work on the marriage. And we're not telling you to divorce. 
we want you to get that strength and that support so that you have the best chance of winning her back. Because what you will allow will continue. Mm -hmm. And you've, this has been going on because you're not stopping it somewhere. And it's not that you can't make, you can't make her do anything, but you can say, this is what's going to be allowed in our relationship. Whether it's, you've got to change your phone, you've, you know, all those well, kind of things. Well, this is like, this doesn't work for, for you, right. JR. So it's right. like, what can you tolerate and what can you not tolerate, right? So sticking with... Right, but... The one, one problem I notice every time we start to talk, she starts to get loud and cuss and all. And I say, come on, hey, well, we got to let the neighbors hear all Yeah. JR, yeah. I'm going to give you some yeah. advice that probably wouldn't have anybody mm -hmm. else give you this advice, okay? okay? You, you should get an attorney who can serve her with divorce papers within the next couple of days. Okay. Asking her to move out based on she committed adultery and she's done nothing to fix the character problem that caused the adultery, okay? She won't even talk about it. Okay, so that's, that's my okay. first piece of advice. She has a surgery okay. coming up and because she needs you to mm -hmm. wait on her, she might be willing to do some things so that you'll wait on her. So rather than wait for her to get comfortable again after the surgery, you have an opportunity here to get her attention. Her cheating on okay. you wasn't enough. And let me tell you something. When she said, I'm not gonna change my phone, I think I probably would have taken the phone and burned it. I would have been so angry over or the affair. I wouldn't affair, have paid for it. No, you're, but your attitude was like, oh, okay, well, if you want to keep your number, that's... Well, uh, she yeah, kept her no, job. There's keep all the kinds job. of things. Buddy, you have ceased to exist in her mind. And what I want to do is I want to encourage you to become a man in her mind. And let's see how she responds to that, see? And like Jill said, I'm, I don't want you to get a divorce but sometimes it's the declaration of the filing of divorce that the the person sees Wakes you up. as a human being for the first time and she's not responding to anything. So if I was your friend, best friend, I'd be begging you, come on, get that thing filed and serve her before the surgery so that maybe okay. maybe you could get her attention versus her thinking, I can go out. I can have an affair. I can buy sexy lingerie because I'm mm -hmm. still involved with him or somebody else. And my husband is going to wait on me hand and foot through the surgery. And oh then my as goodness. soon as I'm done, I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm telling you, buddy, okay. you've got an opportunity you're not mm -hmm. going to have after the surgery. Okay? Am I being cruel? Okay. No, I'm encouraging you to respond to a lack of humility, remorse, uh, a desire to change. What you've done okay. is awfully nice. Adulterous women don't respond to nice guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, got you. Okay, buddy. We're rooting for now, you, okay. JR. Now I'm going to send you a copy of Take Your Life Back because in there it talks about you valuing yourself enough to make decisions like this. You need to go get into okay. a sex anon meeting where other codependent people who have sex addict spouses are talking to you and supporting you and helping you figure out the next best thing. Okay? Okay. Okay. I'm really sorry what you're going okay. through, Jr. But you have to do some things differently if there's any hope for this situation. All right. So, Thank you. yep. And I, uh, I hope that something that I've said here could make a difference. So hold on. I also want to see if we can find a counselor for you that will give you that day-to-day -day, um, help. Look, when you wink it wrong, great proverb. Wink it wrong, you cause trouble. An open rebuke. 
brings lasting peace. And you say, I don't want to hurt anybody. Well, look, when I go to the dentist, I don't say, hey, look, uh, you can do anything unless there's any pain involved. <laughs> Not all hurt is harmful. Right. Mm -hmm. Not all consequences are mean. It's a gift when you force somebody to look at the stuff that they're doing. All right, 1-800-229-3000. That's the phone number, 1-800-229-3000. Oh, I wish they could have been at that marriage intensive. This is the kind of situation where you've got other couples, you've got us, you've got new information. We could have, we could have really dealt with this situation with both of them in the room. You, JR, are entitled to know that she has no desire to be your wife. And from what I've heard, she has no desire to be your wife. She'll live with you, but she's not married to you. We'll take a break. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call one 800 New Life. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're, yeah, right. At New Life is Director of Social Media, and we love our Facebook Live family. So we wanted to say Hey to all of you who are watching on Facebook Live. I know you can't see Steve and I, but you can see Jill. Oh, they don't get to see you guys? They're just seeing no, Larry yeah, and I being there. kind of dull <laughs> here in the studio? We're, we're getting there, but Jill, um, Valerie, who just wrote on there, she said, thanks for all you do. You always give me a lot of hope to meet the challenges I have. You, I love your great advice. And we love having you listen. So uh, share it with your friends. That's what I would say. Share the live stream with your friends on the um, on your news feed, and it'll make a big difference. We're helping people. Facebook Live, we're right there with a lot of other places, podcasts. We've got the app. Oh, the app. Love having you with us, however you get with us let's go over here and let's talk with well let's talk with tim he's calling from tampa bay florida new listener hey tim how are you i'm doing okay thank you i just want to thank you i was turned on to uh every man's marriage uh, a couple weeks ago i got the audio book and uh, i'm through it now it's absolutely outstanding um i wish i would have known this <laughs> years mm. and years ago um but anyway the situation now is um my wife and i we've been married for 21 years we've um had a fight a few weeks ago about six weeks full four weeks ago i guess actually now and um it, it started to get physical in that she was kind of swinging at me 
she scratched my arm. I pushed her away. She sc- she swung at me again. I pushed her away. I didn't push her down or anything like that. But she then she got she started going, you know, just screaming and saying I hit her. Um, we had a great night that night. I mean, I had made her a homemade meal. We had a uh, couple bottles of wine together, and she did just like a, a switch in the bedroom. Just started, mm-hmm. you know, getting really nasty towards me. Um, wanting, you know, refusing to, uh, talk to me and started saying nasty things to me, you know, cussing at me and my weakness. Um, and I know because the Lord has convicted me of this, my weakness is my temper. And, um, I started, you know, yelling back at her and it just, it got to a high level. And then I was trying to go get my phone. She was standing in front of me. I, I kind of uh, held her shoulders and turned her to the side and said, let me get my phone. As I was doing that, then she started swinging at me, mm-hmm. and I've never hit my wife, and I never will, um, but I did push her away. She did say that she, you know, I hit her, and then she was going to get the kids and leaving. I said, okay, well, where are you going to go? You First of all, you're, you're drunk or you're, you're drinking. You can't really leave. And she's like, well, I'm going to call my sister. Or I'm going to call the cops. I said, call, go ahead, call the cops. She okay. never did. All right, so, got the kids so there. They're you... Eight, they're 8 and 12. Okay, so yeah. we're going to have to get to the question. You got physical yeah. with her, whether well, it's an you both official got physical, yeah. hit. Both of you right. were physical with each other. She left with the kids. Now, where are we today? No, she 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 did not leave with the kids. She never. Okay. She said she was going to, but she never did. Okay. Okay. Then the next morning, she's like, "Oh, I want a divorce. I want a divorce. You know, we need to be done with this." I said, "I don't want a divorce." You know, it's it's not the right thing to do. We have a lot of positive times, you know, a lot of positive things going for, for our lives, okay. you know. So and get to a question my, here question pretty quick. Healing. All right. He, um, healing for my wife. What what could I, and I don't even think she would accept anything from me, but I don't know how to get something in her hands. Um, I've taken steps. I've, I've gone back to my some of my resources in the church. I've used you as a resource. I'm getting back into the church, and... I when I don't drink anymore. We only drank, you know, on one night a weekend on, on something like that. But I need something so, for her to help well, her heal as well. So Tim, here's what you do for her. You do your work. Um, you show her because anything you offer to her for her help is just mm-hmm. going to end up Rejection. back to where you were that Saturday night. Right, and it's like making it be all her problem. Yeah. yeah. yeah I so I would say, yeah, I would say make an appointment with a counselor. And start working on the anger issues and Mm -hmm. start to find out where that's coming from. Anybody who drinks two bottles of wine in in an evening is probably going to have that, you know, rise to the top. Yeah. I mean, it was just the perfect storm. Yeah. And it sounds to me like there's other things that you guys have not addressed yet that she, for her to get to that extreme where she would want to leave, she's frustrated about something. And so the job that you have is for you to do your work first. Tim? Right. And that, yes. Tim, you called yes, a radio right show. right here. Right? You called a radio yes, show. Yes, I did. But it's really hard for you to listen to the people you called, right? No. Well, <laughs> it's been hard for us to say anything to you. And so I'm just letting you know, There's, it, it feels like you're a very forceful person, whether you're physical or not. I am. Okay. I am. So, I've been told I'm intimidating, and I don't even mean to be. Well, Okay. Right. And so to a woman, so, that's going to feel even more yeah. intimidating. Ever since I co-facilitated okay. a group with <laughs> Becky, I'm able to pick up on these things. <laughs> All right. Now, so, Tim, okay. here's Becky, the good news Becky, you're such a good teacher. You. Yes. Here's the good news for you. You ready? Okay. When I'm ready. you... When you humble down and quit stopping drinking and reading books and start working a recovery program, all of your dreams have the potential to come true. If you will go to Alcoholics Anonymous, if you will get a male therapist to help you with this perception Christian male therapist. Yes. Mm-hmm. This perception that you're a bit forceful and you don't even see it. Deal with your anger. If you'll get a sponsor and work the 12 steps, you have a 95% chance of transforming your life into being the man you really actually do want to be. 
That's the hope for you. She said, we need to talk. She's asked me for the first time if I would consider myself a sex addict. You know, I thought it was just about admitting the things that I had done wrong. I, I never had a clue that it was about redeeming our story. You know, I thought it was just about coming clean on what I had done. I had no idea how to help her with her pain. She was a mess, I was a mess, and, and we got divorced. Going to EMB, surrounding myself with these other men, they accepted me for who I was and what I had done, but they challenged me to step up and do better. You know, they'll be around other men who are not just pointing the finger, but um, willing to get in and wade through it with them, you know, get in the trenches. They'll get hope from this workshop. Take my sweet wife and my story. We were divorced, remarried, and on our way to what I think uh, will be the sweetest years of our lives. You know, it's no longer simply about surviving. For the first time ever, you know, we're thriving, we're enjoying where we're at. Hey, listen, if you're struggling, we want to see you at the workshop. Give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Last year after every man's battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Because we're doing God's work here, you're restoring marriages, you're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and, and just help them do what God's doing here in the, in the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back, Steve Arterburn here. Really glad you've joined us. Whoa, where did he go? Uh, oh, I, no, I think I think we were done. Well, I had something else I he, wanted to Steve, say. He done. ran away <laughs> from <laughs> us. But, but here's the thing. We he's, could have found a, a great counselor for him in his area. But well, he can call back. Book, Tim, call back. The book he talked about, Every Man's Marriage, is a book about mutual submission. Mm. Right out of the Bible, it's uh, Ephesians 5.21, submit yourselves one to another out of reverence for Christ. When you submit yourselves to one another, it doesn't matter what the other is doing. You are going to work on you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's just... Um, that's just something that reading a book or making a meal, you know, doing all this stuff, it just doesn't, you have to do those things to build character. The hard part about all of that, that humble down mm -hmm. attitude, it's hard for all of us. It is. We so want to justify what we didn't do. Yeah. We want to look like the good guy, no matter what the situation is. So we have all those qualifiers. You heard a bunch of them mm -hmm. in that, you know, I didn't yep. do this. I didn't do that. She needs help, you know, and I'm not picking on you, Tim. You're just a great example of what we, a lot of us do. Right. right. And exactly. we all need to do our own work. Mm -hmm. But it's humility that begins that process yeah. of, of change. Uh, I want uh, I want to talk with Larry, but I, before we talk with Larry, I want to read you another little note from the workshop. <laughs> from our group. From our group. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, she doesn't refer to what happened in our group, I don't think, but but here's what happened. Here's somebody that uh, literally had had felt like she'd been working on a problem for 16 18. years, you know, 18 years. Mm -hmm. All right, but listen to this. This workshop has helped us as a couple see things in a different way and given us practical tools to use moving forward. My husband did and said things I never thought he would. Now, how many women are, are wishing that you, know, you had to? Okay, I've been able to see the work I need to do still and view him in a new way. How many guys would love their wife to view him in a new way? In a day and age where no one seems to be fighting for marriage, it's so refreshing to come to a place where so many people are fighting for your marriage and shaming no one. Hmm. I really feel like the truth was shared in love. Thank you 
to everyone that prayed for us and for all the work you poured into us. May God continue to richly bless new life. Some of the people that we worked with, some of the folks that made the biggest changes were there on scholarship because people want to support this kind of of experience larry we're low on i saw a note we're low on scholarship yes, money sir. we need people uh talk to us a little bit here well I'm before we take this next call i'm glad you're talking about the workshops and some of those testimonies because the that just in uh, reinforces the need for the scholarship money and yeah. I, I have one for, we were talking about restore and that's coming up and i want women to come to that they they'll be surprised at what that workshop is one lady wrote Words cannot express what this weekend's meant to me. I've struggled for over 10 years with my husband's infidelities, which left me broken, feeling worthless. Shelley and the counselors made sense of all my insecurities and hurtful thoughts. Contrary to what my husband said, I learned it's not my fault. This workshop showed me biblically what God expect, expects and wants for me. That alone is priceless. So ladies, um, Amen. I need you to come to that. Folks, we need you to support our scholarship fund. And we also need you to support Club New Life. If you join Club New Life, you will get uh, four uh, daily devotional, 100-day devotionals, 100 days of peace, 100 days of prayer, 100 days of uh, integrity, 100 days of healing. And so... um, and they're beautiful. They are beautiful. They're, they're great they're gifts. They're gift items. Yeah, for Christmas. So Those are just our way of saying thank you for being a regular giver here. But I'm telling you, the real benefit is every time you hear somebody's life changed, and we've read you some testimonies, they'll never be the same. Mm. You folks that support us, that's on you. That's what you did. And, Jill, and you so said great. they're good gifts. Mm-hmm. You join Club New Life, you get four gifts. You get I four know. It's a good person. deal. <laughs> so thank you for those of you who are supporting us. And uh, we're just lo- glad you'll be willing to do more. We need new yes. Club New Life members. Amen. All right, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you can help us to join us on the program, we'll be in the studio another hour and a half. one 800 229 Three thousand, and uh, let's see. Well, how about we go to uh, let's talk with Jonathan from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Sirius XM. Hi there. How you doing? God bless. Thank you for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Sure. What's going on? Okay, so um, I've been married uh, with my wife, uh, and uh, we we're probably going on eighteen years now. And uh, for the last six to eight years, I cannot get my wife to be intimate with me not just intimacy in the sexual relationship but she won't hold my hand she won't kiss me or hug me um she won't tell me if she wants intimacy um i've told her you know i love her what's going on but we still go to church we don't i mean it's just not a abusive relationship it seems so, like all her intimacy just stopped okay just, just stopped i mean if I were talking with her, do you think she would give me any kind of reason or something that happened six to eight years ago or not? Well, I, I, I don't know. So in, in six to eight years ago, we were back. Uh, we lived in, a, in, in, the, in, in Pennsylvania, and, and we lived in California, Nevada, and, and other states. I would travel with my job. So... You know, and, okay. and, and then, then let me ask you this: one hundred percent stop. But you know, we have if yeah. was only if I initiated, if only if I initiated. Okay. But she won't ever initiate. Mm-hmm. What What have you guys done to get some help for anything in any area over the six to eight years? Yeah. So I, I tried to ask her if we need to go and um, you know go counseling or something, but she won't go. I mean, no, and nothing. Okay. So here's how that you. works. It's, it's, Here's how that works. I don't know how, how to get us. When, a, when one yeah. spouse says, I won't go, the other, the other person, you, goes. And then mm-hmm. you start doing some things, treating her differently, saying some things differently. And then one day, after she's noticed that, you say, would you come join us and just give your side of everything? And then there's a really good chance that she'd say, okay, I well, will. Yeah, can and you, you know help the counselor help me? Right? Yeah. Exactly. I always would tell a client, you know, when you have a resistant spouse, you tell the spouse to come in and tell me about them, not yeah. about themselves, you know, that this isn't, you know, I need to know about you. But um, you said, right. you just said something about, um, 
You've talked to her about it. What were you going to say about that, Jonathan? She says it's oh, yeah. all so you. I, That's what I, I heard you that, say. I, I, yeah, she said it's it's just all you. Have to, but, you know, our relationship is, oh, I mean, I, we talk. We we have a son. I mean, we have a child. And, and How old is your talk, son? We do things together. We go out together. I'm How 15. old is your son? Fifteen. Well, Fifteen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, so he doesn't he doesn't see intimate intimacy with my like she won't hold my hand. So he doesn't see the affection part of it. Like I, I you know I would like him to see the affection part of it. The thing about the intimacy and all this is that as a Christian man for all my life, it it is harder to remain in the relationship and have this um, on me when. When I, I don't know what to do, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I mean, so am I going to? I ask you a question. I, I can't understand that. I ask you a question that if I yeah. ask her why or whatever, uh, it, you said no. She she wouldn't say. But you just told me she would say something. She'd say it's all you. So when you ask for the two of you to get help, she says it's all you, and then you don't get help. She's hearing by your actions. You say it's all her. Otherwise, you'd be getting some help. See, so you've said I'm not getting help. It's not all me. It's all you. If you want to get some help with me, then now we can get some help. So it's really simple. You have to go get some help. You have to. You have to get somebody the help. has to do something. Yeah. Right? Versus just stay in in this state of uh, you know you're just stagnant and paralyzed. So you get the help. And and you're saying to her, I've heard you. I'm going to get some help. Right. And then now maybe even that kind of humble move there, acknowledging her in that way, could kind of yeah. Because Jonathan, a break in the wall. I'm imagining that your emotional intimacy isn't so great either. With all of this yeah. going on, yeah. and that's really for women where sex starts. Yeah. Right? If you don't have emotional intimacy, eventually the sex dies. Right. So, how do you get there? Well, I'm going to send you How We Love, and it's going to tell you some things that you can do in there that might open her up. Well, and I think you, Jonathan, need the work. Like you, she said you, it's your problem. I want you to do the work for you to understand you to begin to have insight into her and your marriage. This didn't happen, you know, just all of a sudden. You said six to eight years. So Howie Love is going to give you really great tools to begin to reconnect with each other. Talk to you a little bit about that in just a second. Hey, hey. My wife had found me out and came home one weekend. She had revealed my secret. The only reason I was sorry at that time is because I had been caught. I had had the Every Man's Battle book for years and pulled that book out that weekend and found the phone number on the back and called it. And then a week later, I was at Every Man's Battle. It really gave me the start I needed for my recovery. I never had had that opportunity to sit down with guys I didn't even know and totally open up. The good thing was, was I was opening up to guys I didn't even know. So why did I care? Just lay it all out on the table. I have nothing to lose. You need to check it out. At least go online, check out what it's about, and take the chance and go do it. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to go on struggling. But you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly. 
and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. So, Jonathan, here I think is is one of the toughest things in life is when the other person in your mind is 70% of the problem and you're like, you say, okay, I'm 30% or 20. You got to go work on your 20 to 30%, even if they don't. And that's a really tough thing to do. It's so much easier if you could say, yeah, boy, I've blown it. So I'm really going to encourage you to do the work on your 20 or 30 percent. And that opens her up to do the work that she needs to do with her percentage, even though it's well, bigger. Right. So that'll I'm increase her how- trust of you yes. if she sees I'll you send, doing something. I'll Go send ahead. how we yeah. love. And if you could get to the marriage intensive, these are the kinds of what you'd say it's impossible right uh, and mm-hmm. we talked it very specifically to couples who haven't had sex for six or seven years about how do we turn this around and we want to do that for you so i really hope that you will look into coming to the one i love that i love that idea though of him doing his own work all of us need to do our own work right you got to work our side of the street which is what we talk about all the time but it's so easy to point out what somebody else has got going on Mm -hmm. and it's their fault that's right (laughs) um i got time for one more call if hang on if you're there 1-800-229-3000 if you want to be on the next program cameron dallas texas kwrd how could we help you? What's going on? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I'm divorced and remarried, and I have a good marriage, okay. uh, a child on the way. And recently, I was told that if you get divorced and remarried, you're living in a, a state of adultery. Uh-huh. And I didn't okay. know that. And I just. I'm confused and I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Right okay, now. so, well, first of all, what what happened in the first marriage that caused you to be divorced? I'm just curious. Uh, just, we were not compatible. We ended up, we were not living a godly life, and we were fighting all the time, and it just uh-huh. became to the point where we hated each other. And Okay. Well, we if I had talked agreed. with you... If I had talked with you then, you know, we'd be talking about all sorts of ways to help you in that situation. But that was then. Mm -hmm. And so now we have to ask, uh, if you're living in adultery, would another divorce and ripping families apart, would that be a helpful thing? Well, I don't think so. And there Mm -hmm. are people that literally believe that that is the path, that you need to divorce, remarry. But here's what I think you need to do. I think you need to accept the fact that this is not the unpardonable sin. I wouldn't be saying this if you hadn't divorced. But now that you're remarried, you accept God's grace. You ask for forgiveness for before. And you try to become a man that you would have never, ever become before if you hadn't been so shocked and moved at what somebody said about Mm -hmm. living in adultery. See, I believe that when Jesus died on the cross, he died for the sin of you remarrying, whether you had grounds or not, I really do believe that you can be forgiven and start fresh and new. I believe that's the power of the cross, the grace of Jesus. It doesn't say he died for your sins, well, except if you divorce and remarry now a lot of people you, you might hear that and say well you're, you're just encouraging people to divorce no I'm not I'm talking to a guy that's divorced and remarried mm-hmm. and and uh, am I right that a child is on the way yeah. in the new marriage yep. right yeah okay yes, so sir. what are we gonna do have you divorce and then now we've Leave got a child a, in the no. lurch so so when people think about this for more than five minutes Here's the answer, grace Mm -hmm. of God to cover this, but you go be the godly man. And I know this, you living in shame Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. exactly what Satan wants you to do. You living in God's grace so that you can be the best father and husband ever, that's what God wants you to do. Well, yeah, and you can confess your ignorance to the Lord. Yeah, there right? you go. I, I mean, that's important to do, to confess that. And now that you know that, you're not going to do that sin again, that same sin. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, so what do you you're think going about to that? go forward with the new right. knowledge. So what do you think of that, Cameron? Uh, I mean, that's that's kind of what I thought, and then I, I heard someone say otherwise, and it made me start basically just Googling different people's thoughts, and then I started oh. really feeling condemned and felt like oh. just terrible. Google. Well, oh, I, man. I, I understand. Google is not the Bible. <laughs> no, I understand. Or a good I medical know. professional. No, I that's understand true. where those people are coming from because they yeah. they know how easy it is for people just to move on and, and get a divorce. And we hate divorce. We do these workshops. Yeah. We fight against divorce. We talk about, even in the case of infidelity, you're going to be better off if we can work this out together. But we're not talking on that side of the decision. So I, I hope and pray uh, that you that something we've said is good. I'm going to send you healing as a choice because what it encourages you to do is grieve all that other stuff, accept where you are, embrace that, receive and give forgiveness, and move on as a godly man. That's coming to you. All right, well, we're just about out of time. Let me encourage you. Go to our website or call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Go to newlife.com, 1-800-NEW-LIFE, and look at the things that we have. There are books, videos. There are counselors all over this country. Becky's in, in touch with these therapists. She, she knows their heart. We do everything we can to be sure our network, we've got really great Christian counselors well, there. And you know what, Steve? I want to encourage the listeners to download the app because the there's great resources yes. and tip sheets there, and it's something that you can offer to your friends right. who may not be listeners, but everybody needs help. I mean, it's evident. Um, you saw that this weekend, right? We, we are surrounded everybody. by people who look really good on the outside, but inside they're really struggling with things, and we offer the hope of the world. We do. And I, I, I just thank everybody that supports us. It isn't uh, easy for us to be on the air we love this we love meeting your needs in this way but we want you to go ahead and and call us and let us meet needs in another way and then if by any chance you're able to support us in what we do here's some things that we'll do for you uh, a gift of any amount i can send you a copy of our our calendar way of saying thank you you'll be up on all the things we're going to do in 2020 some great photography quotes encouragement It's um, just a a simple way of saying thank you for supporting us. If you join Club New Life, four 100-day devotional books, they they just are beautiful. They're leather-like, 100 days of peace, 100 days of character, 100 days of, uh, what are the other ones there? Healing. Uh, Healing, and Mm -hmm. then we've got 100 days of more 100 days. All right, so. (laughs) 400 days in all. 400 days of a lot of really good healing. Well, the year is longer than 100 days, you guys. Come on. All right. I know. So so that's our way of saying thanks for being a part of Club New Life. And then, I've told you before, Kirby McCook and the Jesus Chronicles, you give us a gift of $20. It's a $17 hardback book. I'll autograph it to your child or niece, nephew, grandchild, and we'll send it directly to them. And it's it's a wonderful gift, and I love addressing these things to these kids. That's a gift of $20. But we've got so many great resources, and we've got people that know what you need to do, they want to encourage you to do it, and they're at the end of a phone number, 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Why do we do this? We do this because we've seen the results. We've seen the transformation. We've seen what God's truth can do in redemptive relationship. And some of you, you've never been in a redemptive relationship. We can help you. Find that, be that, at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Thanks for being here. See you next time. Thanks, Jill. Thanks, Becky. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live.